Hey Free Range Creatives, it's been a couple of days and I spent some time toying around with a small lathe um, and I think I'm going to be able to do the small finger boxes and stuff that I want to do but I think that's going to be it. Um, today I shopped around at a bunch of discount places. I went to Harbor Freight which I what I really look, been looking for is a way to sharpen chisels like actual chisels, not the carbide tipped ones. This has been an adventure. Um, however, I knew when I got into this, adding this to the Etsy site was going to be more than just buying a lathe and listing stuff on Etsy. I knew that. So, it's okay. Etsy took my site down for a while, which is an interesting story. I started getting emails from Etsy a while ago um, asking me to update my information, which wasn't suspicious, but then you click on the link in the email and it takes you to a really suspicious site that starts with like um, an IP address 00.0.0.6 plus, you know, and then weird site hashes. And I'm like, I'm not putting, uploading my info to this site. So then I would go to the app, the Etsy seller app, and it wasn't asking me for info there. Everything was fine until I logged in and they shut the, sh the shop down, put it in vacation mode uh, because they needed to verify my information. So that took a few days, it got back online. I got a couple of sales, quick sales, as soon as it went back online, so that's good. It makes me confident that once I get this lathe thing figured out, I'm gonna make some more sales. I'm still selling candle holders and stuff there. However, uh, after all the running around today, it takes an hour to get to Portland, South Portland, where there's anything that's close to what I might need. Um, I ended up at Rockler, and I'm not sponsored by Rockler, just putting that up there, but like, wow, what an experience. I've been getting used to going to the big orange lumber box store and the big blue box lumber store, and like, people get paid garbage, and you get garbage. I mean, not that the people working there are bad, it's just, come on, I mean, they they're just, they're getting by, you know, it's a job. But at Rockler, it was a totally different experience. I found a dude who was really into turning and he worked for Rockler and he gives classes on turning at Rockler. Um, and I thought Rockler was gonna be a top end, super expensive place to get tools and things. Um, Cause that's what they put in the forefront of the website. I mean, I know you get what you pay for, but I thought they were way out of my price range. But it turns out, for an extra couple of hundred bucks, I could have gotten this Rockler lathe that has 1.2 horsepower compared to the three-quarter, half to three-quarter horsepower one of this, in this CXRCY. And this CXRCY, as I've been saying, it really doesn't have the power it just doesn't hold up when you lean into it with a cutting chisel so it's been a struggle however i've already bought it so i have to make it work and the top clock is ticking <clears throat> but to add to the pressure i did actually get picked this up at rockler so it's a sharpening station for the chisels it's a sharpening station for a lot of tools but specifically i bought this for the the the, ch the chisels, and I, like I said before, I have borrowed some re a really decent set from a f my friend. So now I have to figure out how to put this together and uh, do a little proper sharpening. I don't think it's going to be brain surgery. It looks like it's pretty straightforward. It operates with a couple of um, tempered glass wheels with adhesive, um, like sandpaper stuck onto them. Which at first, I was like, I don't know. So my, alter my the alternative was to get a jig to hold the chisel onto a variable speed um, bench grinder. Well, I've got bench grinders, but none of them are variable speed, and it has to be variable speed or it will ruin the temper of the metal, right? So stuff you learn on YouTube, hey, you know, you're learning how to be an artist, I'm learning how to be a woodworker, now metal worker to sharpen my tools. So anyway, by the time I bought that jig and the variable speed 
bench grinder, I was going to be in it for 240 some dollars, which is exactly the cost of this station that's an entire self-contained system that's made specifically for that purpose. So I think I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to put a link in the YouTube version of this video. Those watching on Valley Vision, you can find the Free Range Creative on YouTube. But um, to this lathe, this CXRCY, I don't know how you pronounce that, if it's Xerxes or Xerxy or whatever, and the Rockler lathe is, I think is going to be far and away superior. However, I have to get turn this into a profit. So now I was at 500 and some dollars. So now I've added another 240. So I need to make 760, <laughs> which sounds, it's starting to get a little overwhelming. So, but at this stage, I've got the, all the proper chisels. I have a parting tool, which I needed was an added chisel. Um, it's not, it's a, not a great one. It's a cheap one, um, but that's okay. I can sharp resharpen. Um, until I get things going. Um, I've got the lathe. Granted, it's not as powerful as I'd hope, but I can't let that disappointment temper the production of what's going on, of what has to happen to make this make this work out. Because I like doing this. This is like another like artistic endeavor for me, but it has to support itself. I can't just be a hobbyist. I want to be a working free range creative, an artist, and this is part of that. Why I chose wood, I don't know. But when you when I was work trying things on Etsy, I was trying like uh, a lot of different things. I tried paintings and things, but my descriptions weren't matching my product. So the woodworking stuff, the simple woodworking things like simple rustic New England. That's like my keys phrases for the Etsy. That's what's working. So I threw that mud at the wall. I, it's something that I enjoy doing and it's stuck. So now I'm honing that a little bit better. It's all about the lathe because the pressure is really getting coming on. Like it's now that I've ramped this up to a couple hundred dollars under a thousand. I really need this to start going the other direction, but we have everything we need now. And this is always a stage. This happened with the food truck too, where there's an investment stage. Like you, it seems like something's going to be cheap, but you always go to plan for those surprises and they go beyond. But then you have to have a solid plan to reverse those gears and bring that money back the other way. And this summer, I will be returning that money from the food truck. It'll be coming back in and I'll get to cook for people to hang out, do some really cool stuff. I got another video. I'm going to share that stuff later. It's going to be all be happening, but you cast a wide net, you know, but same thing. Like once I got the, it was just getting the food truck ready for food was one thing, but getting the inspections, the licenses, um, dealing with the bin number, there's, there's a whole great story there that's coming as soon as I can get some time to make that video and get this video and get this thing done. So stick with me. Uh, Let's hope this works. I'm going to really make a concerted effort over the next few days to get this done. But on Tuesday, which is only, oh God, three days away, I have to do a presentation at the local college about being a free range creative and a professional artist. So yeah, I, I took that on and I agreed to that and I'm excited about that too. But so there's a lot going on right now. Hang with me, stick with that journey. I'm going to record that talk too, and we'll use bits and pieces of that on YouTube and on Valley Vision. And that's the other thing. Valley, my, my local public access t station, Valley Vision 3, decided to put the free range creative on the air. So we're on the air in uh, Conway, New Hampshire now, and North Conway, New Hampshire as well. And so wherever you want to see Valley Vision 3, I'll put the link to Valley Vision 3 down below. Support that public access station. I go and film their planning boards and, and uh, other meetings for them. So, hold your breath, cross your fingers. Here we go, we're gonna make some small boxes and get them on Etsy ASAP. I've got a plan, here we go. One of the things that everybody's probably noticed is the chaos, you know, and this workbench has turned into chaos and it's preventing me from being able to calm down and sharpen. So. Just, this is all just this project that all this chaos started here. Over there is the remnants from 
the holiday season cutting packing and shipping so we need a little a little zen I'm gonna spend I'm gonna take 20 30 minutes and start and just clean up this area where I've been trying to figure out this lathe and these chisels um, and make this space workable and this happens like this is right so like sometimes you just need to spread out and figure stuff out and just look at everything but the problem that I'm having now is the things that I want to focus on are all over the place and that's not good so we're gonna spend a little time clean up and organize and then come back to um, getting all these chisels sharpened and our glue ups done One thing I have discovered about sharpening my chisels is it's less of an exacting science than I thought it was going to be. I mean, I was really worried about angles and stuff and um, the sharpening system has a little rest bar on the top and if you are cautious and conscientious of where the edges hit, you can really just kind of wing it. I know it's probably not perfect, but it does do the job and it does work. Uh, and so I don't think I'm going to need to invest in a whole bunch of those discs right away because I can kind of use all the discs and the wheels top and bottom so that's good hey free range creatives it's uh, the next day um, and look at this I have made it work wait is the focus working Arr. so this is a piece of maple. A friend of mine had a uh, an old uh, dining room table that someone was throwing out and salvaged, and so let me have it. And I love that sound. the The cap fits nice and snug. Of course, this is um, already dried, kiln dried. It's already been used as a table, so it'll it'll stay that way. The birch one that I had made. As it, of course, as it dried, the wood shifted and it loosened the cap. Um, <clears throat> but I really like that the uh, the grains all line up on it. You can see right here. Maybe it's not exactly perfect, but I think it's really good. So, my for the for the third attempt. So we're we're getting there. Um, this is just finished with a little wax and boiled linseed oil. And I think I've. I really got it down so now I'm I'm working on ways of just making the blanks right so then when I do this like this is where the the jaws will hold on this will be the box part this will be the lid part and this is where jaws hold on because you have to cut it and then make these fit together <clears throat> with some um, drilling and stuff so I've got a couple of these ready to go the joinery you can see my glue up wasn't great um, it doesn't go all the way through though it's not like it's a gap all the way through um, but by the time I turn it down it does leave a little gap so this one so I mean ideally these I'd be making these out of a solid piece but the table is only I mean the um, the stock that I'm using from that table is just over like three quarters or something like that it's so I can't I have to do a glue up for a number of reasons that I've discovered um, but I think it looks great I mean I mean I'm really happy with it I think I'm going to um, burn I don't know like a tree of life or something in the top um, my initial idea was a dice box but it's just a little finger box you can put stuff in like I don't know rings or whatever I don't know some some people might have other ideas of things that could go in this but that's not for me to decide um, 
yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this. I really want to um, hang out here and see if I can make a half a dozen of them in a day, but I really need to focus on this presentation. So I'm just going to call this a win. I don't think I'm going to list this one on Etsy. I think this will be a, my prototype because um, there's a couple of things. So in, in the lid, you can still see the uh, that little point in there. I'd like to turn that out in the next one. Um, it's just from where I used the Forstner bit drill to empty that out. And then I said, ah, oh, that'll be fine. But now that I'm looking at it more, it's less fine. I think it'll still be a fine thing for a sale, but I could... I can fix that, I think. So I'm just gonna let this ride. There's always gonna be a, that same divot is gonna be in the bottom, but it's it's inconsequential, I think. I don't think it'll matter. But I think it's cool. I think they're, I mean, everyone will be different. So that's gonna be my other challenge. Every single one of these, no two are gonna be exactly the same. You can even see in these blanks, I was like, oh, this one's gonna be about this size, this one's gonna be about that size. They're not the same size. So no two will be identical. So the hard part is when I list them, they have to be individually listed because somebody will complain if the picture doesn't match what they got, um, which is a kind of a huge pain. I have a bit of a photo box. I, I think I can just set up a photo area maybe and just, ha and just take pictures of four or five at a time. So I'm going to slow my roll, um, cool my jets, and... <clears throat> focus on getting this presentation done and then come back and see if I can do these like all in once. So maybe I'll make, I don't know, four or five of these, three or four of these, and then three or four, I'll take them three or four to the next stage, take three or four to the next stage, and then I'll take pictures of three or four and then list three or four in a batch to see if I think that'll be the most efficient way to do that um, yeah so the discovery really has been the sharp chisels make a huge difference I thought the chisels which were, were sharp but they weren't as sharp as I thought they were because after I put them through my sharpening um, there's a there's a big difference in the way everything cuts so um, the Xerxes, the, the CXRCY is now getting named Xerxes. The Xerxes is uh, going to be okay. And I'm going to be pretty happy with it, I think, once I keep my chisels sharp, which is going which to which is gonna be key anyway. All right. So that, with that, it's time to go prep for this presentation tomorrow. And I need to organize that a little bit and decide if I want to take any images. I shipped out. Uh, we got a couple of orders that ship out. So there's some nice little custom pieces there um, that are going out. What else? Did a little web design this morning for one of my clients. Um, Saco River Community Television over there. Um, Every once in a while, they'll shoot me a message. They need a website update and a little trading of cash flow for goodies. Um, that's it. That's the update for now. Um, I'm, I'm really pleased. I think this. I'm going to call this Lay of the Success. And um, next week, after this, after this talk, uh, this presentation at the college is, is cleared out of my head, um, I'll have time to just lean into this and figure out how I'm going to make a bunch of these all in one. I would really like to find some two inch by two inch complete stock, but I don't know if I'm going to. So they're all going to have they're all going to have these seams in them for now. But I don't think that's the end of the world. I mean, I think wood kind of feels like it's allowed to do that. Um, and then maybe in the summer, I can find wood, use found wood and bring it in and turn it down and let it dry out. All right. On to the next thing. <laughs>